So Ben, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, man. This is great. I'm so glad that you're doing this project. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun getting to play with all the different bone players in town. It's an awesome scene to be a part of. Yeah. I'm glad we're both here. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Uh, so Ben, let's talk a little bit about the name of the tune. So I called the tune Multiple Man mm -hmm. because you play so many different brass instruments. Yeah, I um, uh, in high school I played trumpet and French horn. I actually studied on trumpet all the way up until I got to college, and I didn't switch to playing low brass until I got to college. Mm -hmm. uh, but since then, um, I've played a lot of tenor trombone, a lot of bass trombone, a lot mm -hmm. of euphonium. Um, some tuba and sousaphone, a uh, little bass trumpet when I can get the chance to do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's just a way to keep engaged in a bunch of different styles of music and a way to make sure that I can keep working on uh, lots of different kinds of stuff with different people. Yeah. Well, I certainly think that plays a big part in your teaching. It absolutely does. And, you know, just like a lot of us freelance musicians, mm -hmm. teaching is a big part of my week every week. And so having, a, especially especially just in the past few years, really focusing on working on how to play tuba and how to make that a little bit different than maybe even playing trombone or mm -hmm. uh, trumpet and French horn. It's really changed uh, how I approach teaching some of these kids that I work with every week. Yeah. Ben, I remember that we first uh, worked together at University of Minnesota when I was getting my doctorate. Yeah, that's right. I was getting my undergrad in music education at the time. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we have in common. I also have a music ed degree for my undergrad. Yeah, that's right, absolutely. You know, it's, uh, I'm really glad that I, I got that undergrad degree in music education because it sure helps me uh, classroom management, doing guest artist appearances. Oh, yeah, and, it was invaluable for me, yeah. too. I mean, and even going out and working in the field for four or five years, the stuff that you learn on the podium in terms of, like, compressing the amount of time that you have to deliver material mm -hmm. and how you evaluate what kids are doing, it's just absolutely invaluable for a guest artist experience, I think, mm -hmm. in particular, just because you have so little time usually to work with the students that are in front of you. Yeah. And then it was a couple years later, I think we reconnected, where we reconnected here, Jess? Yeah, I think, I think we did. It was at a, one of the Tuesday night bands. There's a big band, big bands run here mm -hmm. every Tuesday night. I think we were playing in the same section again. That was probably yeah. the first time in three or four years before that. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that was my big band. I don't remember if it was. <laughs> it might have been Bill's. It could have been Bill Simon's. Yeah. Um, but it was it was cool. I mean, you we chatted a little bit about where I was, and I was getting ready to step away from teaching high school. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned McNally Smith's master's degree program, and that was a that was the right thing at the right time. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. Do you feel like that that helped you out to transition into your new career? Absolutely. I mean, you taught me how to play sousaphone. Mm -hmm. And I still do a lot of that, <laughs> which is fantastic. And uh, it just exposed me to a lot of different kinds and styles of music that I didn't really, really realize you could make part of a living or all of a living playing, which mm -hmm. is really pretty cool. Or producing or writing or arranging. Mm -hmm. you know, any of the different stuff that both of us do to make a living yeah. that we still do. I learned a lot of it there, a lot of it from you, from Pete Whitman and Steve Jennings and a lot of those guys that are still active in the scene. Mm -hmm. Well, Ben, out of all the things that you're doing in town, what would you say like the number one thing you're doing right now that's fun is? My my favorite thing over the past few years has probably been working with the New Standards Trio when they do their large events mm -hmm. like the holiday show in December. And they also they did a Peggy Lee show a few years ago. Mm -hmm. That was fantastic. And uh, they have a movie theme show that we're going to uh, be out on tour in uh, greater Minnesota in March and April. You know, I do notice, uh, I see those pictures with all your different beautiful BAC horns. <laughs> Is there a tuba in there too? Yeah, but it's a con. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't think, I think Reggie has the only tuba that, <laughs> that, they've, that they've put together. So That's cool. Yeah. Do you have any advice for maybe younger players that are coming up? It could be, you know, low brass doublers, or it could be just people that are looking to make a career playing music and teaching music. Uh, I think the two or three most important things are to to get really, really good on your instrument, whatever your instrument is, whether mm -hmm. it's, I mean, even if you're considering composing or arranging, you just gotta practice a lot. I think it's great to play with other people as often as you can, mm -hmm. so you understand, you know, really what it feels like and sounds like when things are really working with other people. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, you just, I think you really have to be a good person. I think that's crucial mm -hmm. to making it in the music scene. Yeah, because I mean, none of us are getting wealthy off this, but having good people around you means that we can support each other. Mm -hmm. Totally. So, what do you say we go record this uh, duet? Yeah, let's do it. Let's make it happen. All right. Cool. <laughs>